Dear students, in this lecture, we shall learn about partial linear market model. It's a lengthy word, but it has its uh, relevant meaning. Uh, it's set as partial because in this model, we are dealing with one commodity at one time. And it is linear because we are assuming the uh, possibility of linear relationships only. And it is market model because we are dealing with a market. So let's see how we can build this model. Now, this is the uh, beginning of the development of the model. Initially, we need to have uh, variables. In this case, we we'll talk about market model. There are three variables. One is the QD, that is quantity demanded, quantity supplied with the QS, and the price is represented by P. This is how we develop a model. Firstly, by getting the variables that should be included in it, because a model is a collection of relevant variables. Now, uh, once we have developed the list of uh, the variables, now we are getting down to the uh, list, uh, uh, the, the condition that should be satisfied in this model. Now, this condition is very famous. Um, all of you should know from your knowledge of microeconomics that this is the equilibrium condition of a market, that QD is equal to QS. So once we have noted this thing, now we are starting with the uh, conditional equations and we are getting to the, uh, the stage where we will try to see if they satisfy the values that we are going to achieve. Um, QD minus QS is equal to zero. This is yet another way of writing the equilibrium condition. Simply by transferring QS to the left-hand side, we get this expression. And if it is equal to zero, it definitely means that QD and QS, they are equal to zero. In other words, what we are trying to say is that excess demand is not there. There is no excess demand, right? So this is the way we, we need to start the development of the model. Now we are getting into the behavioral equations, the behavioral equations of QD and QS. So you see how we are using the uh, types of equations that, uh, that are there, that is the uh, conditional equations and uh, behavioral equations and so on. So these tools from mathematics, they help us to uh, develop a model and then to analyze it. Um, QD is having this form and QS is having this form. Now we should try to do some hair splitting. Uh, A is there. A and B and C and D. You can guess that these are parameters and there has to be some parametric restrictions on them. And as we can see, all of these, they are positive. We are keeping them positive so that we could observe their, uh, their interpretation in terms of their slope and their in intercept. Uh, by keeping them positive, now we are able to uh, see the sign which is associated with them. And that will allow us to interpret the slope and the intercept. As you can see, we have mentioned here that A is the intercept of QD and B is the slope of QD. This is the intercept and this is the slope. And the negative sign here is basically telling us that the slope is negative. So this sign now is more easy to interpret once we uh, dispel the possibility of having A, B, C, D in some other sign that is a negative sign. It itself is a positive sign uh, uh, and, and it's a positive value. So the sign with it is going to allow us to interpret it. Now I can guess uh, from the second equation that this intercept is uh, falling into the negative quadrant and uh, the slope of the supply function is having a positive sign. So positive sign means that there is a positive slope. As you can see, C is the intercept and D is the slope of QS, that is the supply curve, and that is a positive slope. We should look at th uh, this situation in, in terms of a graph. Now let's see how a graph will help us to explain the development of this model. On the left hand side, you can see the graph and the explanation is there. QS is the horizontal intercept at P1. QS, this is the QS, as you can see, it is having this intercept and this is the horizontal intercept and the point is P1. 
Now, this is a very important point because it has economic interpretation. It is called as reservation price. And this is the uh, minimum price at which the seller is interested to sell the commodities. Below this price, the seller is not interested because perhaps he thinks that it is wasteful or not cost effective to sell the product. So you can see before this level of price, that is P1, in all of this region, no supply occurs. And after this, the supply has started. After understanding this, we should know that um, this is something contrary to what we usually see. Why? Because you can see the convention of plotting the Q and P is opposite to what we have done here. In our usual practice, we put QD and QS on x-axis and P on y-axis. But this is not done here. Why? Because once we look at the uh, function that we are dealing with, and that is QD is a function of price and QS is a function of price. So the dependent variable should come on y-axis and the independent variable should come on x-axis. So this is not what we see in the diagrams in economics, but right now we are more concerned with the mathematical interpretation of the things. This is why we are resorting to this diagram and mathematically if we see it is justified. However, the diagrams that we see in, in our economics books, they are basically more suitable from the inverse demand function perspective. Whereas we are dealing with demand function and supply function in this case and not their inverse versions.